Christ is risen. Truly he's risen. Alleluia. Okay, Father Francis here with you on this supplemental video for the fourth Sunday in Easter. And uh, so I'm here today just to kind of show you that there is springtime up here in beautiful Tahoe City. Uh, Going to show a little bit of our beautiful flower barrels that are starting to bloom like crazy. Again, we have had, if you watch the, uh, the video I pre-recorded several weeks ago for the first fourth Sunday of Easter, uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, uh, you will see a dramatic uh, difference between uh, these pictures of the flowers and the uh, other video for the fourth Sunday of Easter where I'm standing literally, I think, in a little bit of a snowstorm. That's my my beautiful St. Michael's Chimes clock, clock that I got from a place called Baumholder, Germany, about 20 years ago, <laughs> maybe a little more than that. Anyway, so, um, and then I uh, also, I know some of you are not really big into the tech thing, and that's perfectly okay, but I'm celebrating a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a tech uh, Christmas, if you will, I was able to get the uh, the new uh, Mac Studio, uh, which is you know being touted by Apple as the 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 greatest thing since sliced bread, and so it's going to enable me to make more videos. <laughs> Some people are probably cringing when they hear that more videos, but it's it's been a it's been a little bit of a. Uh, uh, a little bit of a challenge because of, I guess, supply lines and and so on and so forth. But uh, I finally bit the bullet uh, a lot with a lot of other YouTube creators uh, and ordered my Mac Studio. I did not order the, the top of the line Mac Studio, but I did order uh, the one that will certainly meet my needs. And uh, I'm a little bit kind of proud of myself because um, people that are into the Mac ecosystem and I'm using uh, my 24-inch iMac, uh, M1 Mac, uh, uh, um, iMac. Um, the, you know, a lot of times people, the reason why they liked Mac products and uh, uh, Mac uh, technology, I guess, was because it was sort of like a, it was like the, the, the guys that like to tinker on their cars or the DIY type people that wanted to kind of, you know, do it yourself. Can you, can you do something that's going to give you something that you're being told that, you know, if you go to the store, you can buy this thing or this, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for to, to make an upgrade in your, in your life, whether it's, you know, maybe building your own patio, uh, fixing, you know, that, that sticky window that isn't working or that broken chair, or those kinds of things that you know you can you can do it yourself, and I think that was originally you know 40 years ago when the the Apple people kind of came on the scene was that you know computers everybody knew that computers were the next uh, thing technologically wise speaking, and and a lot of people started tinkering with them in their garages and kind of like okay we want to. You know, how can we create something that is user friendly? That was the main thing. You know, you had the IBM mainframes in, in uh, companies and corporate companies and, uh, you know, big factories and things like that and big process data processing plants. But but how could a, an individual, you know, a regular person have access to a computer? And so the interesting thing was that that's, this is was the the genesis of, I guess it was homebrew computer networks. I know I'm getting a little bit far afield and I promise I, I'll get right back on track. But the bottom line was that people were trying to find ways that they could have access to make this computing idea accessible to them in their homes. And that was the, gave birth to the, the home computer. But it was people that just basically wanted to figure out, well, okay, I can't go out and spend literally tens of thousands of dollars to get a computer in my house, but how could I build one myself, you know? And, and so this new Mac Studio kind of harkens back to, the, to the, 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 the Mac Cube, I guess it was, which was actually a really cool concept. And now here it is 
kind of fully envisioned in a new in a new product that seems to be uh, delivering a lot of computing power to people uh, who make videos and do photo fo photography and 3D animation and you name it. So anyway, it's been a kind of a, a real boon to a lot of people. But one of the things about having a true Macintosh spirit was that, again, you know, it wasn't just going out and buying the latest and the greatest. It was a lot of things about Mac, uh, the Mac ecosystem where you could kind of mix and match products uh, that, that would still work. And so I was kind of a little bit proud of myself because um, I have this 14-year-old uh, or maybe it's 16-year-old um, uh, monitor which I bought, you know, uh, 14, 16 years ago. And they don't even make them anymore, but I think they're still absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And I thought, well, why do I want to go out? Now, I did order the new one, but I don't know if I'll even use it now. I'll probably use it for another, another I'll use it for something else. But this is a 30-inch display. They don't make these anymore. And the, the biggest they make right now, I guess, I guess they make a 32-inch um, uh HDR, high, high, high definition range uh, 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 monitor, but, I don't, but that's like a $6,000 monitor. Anyway, long story short, so I found a way, and this is again going back to that true Macintosh spirit, you find a way to make all of these things, if you can, make them work together. And so taking a 16-year-old monitor and, and plugging it into a brand new machine and it works is kind of... It's kind of one of those satisfying things like, you know what, that was a good investment 16 years ago. It's still a good investment today and I'm still using it. I'm getting more mileage out of it. It still works. And uh, so that's that's one of the things that I thought was really interesting about this newest uh, 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 iteration of the of the Mac uh, studio. Anyway. OK, so sorry for the, the the tech thing there. I just. Uh, you know, I, again, I have been hmm, kind of under the weather this past week. Um, I, I had some kind of a, a cold. There, is, there goes the phone. Probably somebody wondering what mass time it is today. And my lower back went out. And most of the time, uh, I had a vaccine injury five years ago, four or five years ago, due to the shingles. Uh, Centrex or whatever it is, it's a it was a, uh, a vaccine supposedly for to prevent shingles. When you get to be my age, you want to like to have a little bit of ounce of of, of pre prevention. So you know that used to be a, a good adage. You know, hey, a, a pound of uh, an ounce of prevention means uh, is better than a pound of cure, as they used to say. And I believe and I believe that I believe that you know it's good to be take good care of yourself. Well, unfortunately. I did not realize that uh, that vaccines are not like uh, aspirin or innocuous things. They have side effects, and some of them can have, depending upon you and your body, they can have some very severe side effects. So anyway, um, so I've been under the weather a bit the last week, and uh, trying to, you know, my lower back's been inflamed. I don't know what caused that. But it seems to be getting a little bit better. I can kind of move around again. So, but uh, this last week, um, we have been inundated, I guess, in the media by by those who are, uh, let's just say the the, the pro-choice, well, the abortion people. Let's just say what it, what it really is, uh, and their their concerns that Roe v. Wade is going to be overturned. Uh, which came out as a leaked document, uh, an early draft from the Supreme Court. And the, the reason why I'm even making this video, because there's a lot of, as I thought about this video and what I really needed to say or should say or could say, and, and part of me says, well, there are other people that certainly uh, have uh, larger YouTube followings, they have more viewers. They have more. Um, they they broadcast to to thousands of people. I mean, I, I technically we all broadcast to the world, but we only have so many people that actually are subscribed and follow us on a regular basis. And I and I'm painfully aware, not painfully aware, but I'm aware. I'm clearly aware that I don't have a large uh, viewership, and and that's always been okay with me. There's a few people from. 
uh, different parishes in my past that occasionally will, you know, uh, tune in to see what I'm up to and what I have to say, and I appreciate that. And again, if you are from a, a former parish or somebody had discovered me years ago, and every now and then you just tune in, I, I say thank you and uh, thank you for uh, you know uh, uh, taking the time to listen to what I have to say. I appreciate that. So part of me was saying, well, you know, um, you know, maybe it's better to left to other people that have a, a bigger uh, subscribership, viewership, and just let this one go. And I thought about it, and but I thought, no, I, I probably need to, I need to add my voice. And see, that's, I guess, that's the point of this whole thing, is that we all have a voice, no matter how insignificant or no matter how small you think your voice is, it helps for us to stand up and be uh, accounted, uh, you know, and stand, you know, in other words, you know, it's like the whole system that we have in this country is a system based on law and voting. And so the people that are crying out and screaming and, and, and breathing threats, I guess, apparently, as of yesterday, today's Saturday, uh, apparently some people uh, from the uh, abortion side started, uh, you know, they, well, actually the night, I guess this whole thing leaked back in, on Tuesday or Wednesday, that uh, they, were, they were going to take action and they were going to, uh, whether they, you know, they, they started uh, protesting in front of the Supreme Court, uh, then there was talk about them actually going to the homes of the independent uh, justices that apparently would be voting uh, in favor of this. And we gotta we got to make sure that we understand something here. And I think that, again, this, this is something that people uh, that are militantly pro-abortion just won't listen. Anybody that seems to be on this left woke train, uh, they don't want to hear facts and they don't want to hear reasoned arguments. All they want to do is scream and yell, almost like little children that don't get their way. And unfortunately, every time we give in to, to this kind of a response, we, we weaken our society. Okay, uh, We kind of go down the same path that happened, you know, with whether it was the, the, the early Nazi days when they would go through the streets beating up all the uh, opponents that they didn't like. And then, of course, the Russian Revolution which was a horrible disaster for the for the Christian church, where they went in and basically killed clergy, destroyed and burned down churches, and imprisoned tens of thousands, if not millions of people in gulags because they had the wrong opinion. Okay, So it's important that we do uh, voice our opposition to something that's so evil. So getting back to what I was going to say just a minute ago regarding you know the law and reasoned arguments is that, you know, most people, if you listen, will say that Roe v. Wade was bad law, period. Bad law in the first place. In other words, it really wasn't built upon the Constitution. You know, the bottom line is that there is no constitutional provision for abortion. And whether it emanated from the penumbra of uh, privacy is, is, well, it's just... It, there's nothing there. There's no foundation, okay, in the Constitution, in, in constitutional law. So it's a very, very uh, poorly written, poorly drafted uh, document, and it needs to be rejected based on those things. Now, the result would be that uh, it would no longer be a federal law or whatever protecting, you know, uh, the right to abortion, which I think there is no real right at all. Now, again, it needs to go back and be voted on. It needs to be voted on at the state level. That's where it should have been in the first place. And yes, there are other, there are other issues that also need to be voted on. See, that was the thing about the whole gay marriage issue, is I'm going, why don't we let the people of this country vote on this? But oh no, the, the judges took it over and basically they ramroded it, ramroded it through the, the judicial, judicial system, say that fast five times, and forced, forced this whole idea of same-sex marriage on our country. So again, another thing that should probably have been put to a vote by the people, not legislated uh, through the back door by a couple of judges who were clearly, uh, clearly uh, motivated 
Uh, Judge uh, Von Walker uh, was a, an avowed uh, homosexual, and uh, he he didn't hide that fact. But the re- reality is that that's what he, um, you know, he should have recused himself. He should have because he wasn't by he was not unbiased. He certainly had a vested interest in that whole issue. So again, but I get a little far afield. But getting getting back to the to the law, it should it needs to be. It's just like with your. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of times when, when back in the early days when electricity was kind of the new thing instead of computers, uh, people did all sorts of inventive things with electricity, which a lot of times was extremely dangerous. You know, plugging in multiple cords here and there in one socket and, you know, and then you had this jumble of, you know, uh, it was electrical hazard, you know, waiting to happen, you know, this disaster. And again, it wasn't good. It wasn't safe. Uh, so what you needed to do is you needed to go back, <clears throat> bring in a, a a real electrician, and have him make your home safe so that you could add different electrical uh, appliances or fixtures so that it would be safe. And and I think that that's kind of the way that I look at this this whole thing about the Supreme Court and the law is that it wasn't done right. So let's do it right. Let's go back and you know now again clearly. There are a lot of states, thanks be to God, that have some moral convictions and realize that the right to life is preeminent. Praise God, you know. So, you know, again, uh, these people that are angry and upset and breathing threats, uh, apparently they've not only have they uh, breathed threats against uh, the Supreme Court justices that they believe would be in favor of overturning Roe, but now, uh, apparently, there's been a call uh, by this group called Ruth sent us. <laughs> you know, again, another irony is that Ruth Bader Ginsburg herself, before she died, uh, made it abundantly clear that she thought Roe was bad law. But they don't hear that. Um, and I'm going to say something that might be a little bit insensitive, but I mean, it, it's, it's a fact. A, a lot of these people, if you watch them, you know, a lot of them are people, uh, mostly over, overweight, obese, lesbian women and other uh, LGBT types who are screaming the loudest about this whole thing. And the irony is that they're not in danger of ever becoming impregnated. OK, you know, most most LGBT people do not procreate. It's a biological impossibility. Um, and the other ones, I'm sorry, but there's not a pandemic of pregnancy going through the world today, okay? And a lot of these people, you see them stand up and screaming and shouting and all these horrible things that they say. You know, I feel like saying just, you know, calm down. You don't need to ever worry about becoming impregnated. Seriously, you're okay. You're going to be safe, you know? Uh, unfortunately, but <laughs> some of these people are just... They're bizarre. They're absolutely bizarre, and they're. I think they're, to some to some extent, maybe they're they're demon possessed. I don't know because the the hatred and the anger that they express is just absolutely beyond the pale. It's incredible. Um, and the the reality is that even over the years, and I remember being in college, and this was one of the big hot button issues. It always has been, always will be. Um, um, is uh, that, you know, the, the, the first argument was, well, the baby in the womb, you know, well, first of all, it's my body, my choice. Well, biologically and scientifically, it's not your body. It's another independent, unique, created human being. Yes, it is now... Uh, needing you to bring forth all the nutrients and for its growth, its gestation, and its uh, future uh, development uh, and birth, but it's already alive. It's an independent living, independent being, okay? It's not also an an undifferentiated clump of cells that sort of like, it it could be a lizard, it could be a kitty cat, it could be a a cantaloupe, you know? No, 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 that's ridiculous, okay? Again, when people are forced to listen to biology and science, they are left with no other options except to admit, yes, it's a human life. Bingo. And now they're saying, yes, it's a human life. 
But now they are clinging on because it's the last thing that they can cling to is that I have a right to kill this individual uh, human being. And now it's now it's not even just that it's extending to, you know, post birth. If it's even a couple of days later, we can, you know, put this little person in a little, you know, cold hospital room and make a determination whether or not we still want to end its life. That's murder, folks. It just it's murder. And what you're really arguing for is one right of people to have a legal right to kill another group of people. That's that's the reality of this. So, and and now most of them will acquiesce or concede that, okay, yeah, it's a human life, but I still have a right to kill it. And again, we get back to the Supreme Court you know, and the Constitution, and there is no right at all to, for legalized murder. And I'm going to go ahead and end with this. You know, a lot of these people who are, you know, on the left, they tend to be See, this is my left, or yeah, I guess that's my left. Okay, you're right. My right, your left. Okay, people on the left, <clears throat> they'll make these arguments about, you know, we have to stand up for LGBT alphabet ideology because those people are bullied. You know, all these poor, you know, kids that are bullied and they need to be, you know, shored up and encouraged, you know, in their sexual identities, you know. Um, first of all, I don't know what place sexual identity has to do with little first graders or preschoolers or third or fourth or fifth graders. I have no, I have no clue how that ever got in there. I mean, these people infiltrated our education system. You know, shame on them. There needs to be some laws passed on what an actual uh, uh, educational curricula should be. Okay, you know, you can't just become a teacher. It'd be like a doctor saying, well, I'm a doctor, but that means I can do experimental, you know, procedures on people. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay, you have to follow what is prescribed for the practice of good medicine, okay? Well, we've allowed these um, aberrant types to infiltrate our education system. And part of it has to do with the fact, and I was a school teacher, so I can say this, because it didn't attract the, the best and the brightest because of the, the pay salary. It was, you know, you know again, I was just happy to be a teacher and I was happy to be a Catholic school teacher. Um, but uh, the thing is that most uh, schools, and also you have to, not only is it the pay is a, is a huge concern, but also the disciplinary problems in schools that face most teachers. Most teachers go into a combat zone instead of a classroom. You know, who would want to do that ever on a daily basis? I know I wouldn't. Uh, but anyway, so um, so we need to reclaim, you know, we need to have good teachers, you know, teachers that are going to go in and teach these little kids, you know, how to tie your shoe, how to tell time, how to add and subtract, how to do, you know, how to spell your name, you know, how to how to write, how to, you know, how to how to even, you know, appreciate things like the beauty of music and art and, and good storytelling and things like that. You know, again, let's start educating kids instead of indoctrinating them into this one issue, you know. But here's the thing, and I was going to close with this. You know, these, a lot of these people that are, oh, you know, these poor, you know, kids that are, maybe identify as these aberrant uh, sexual idea, ide identities, which is ridiculous. Um, you know, uh, they talk about, you know, you're bullying these poor kids. You know, we need to stand up for them because they're smaller and, and helpless, what about the little baby in the womb? Aren't they small and helpless? See, again, as I started this whole video, as I said, I wonder if I should even make a video because who am I? I'm just one guy, just, you know, one person in a big sea of other big fish that are probably going to say more important things than I ever will. But the point is that I have a voice. You have a voice. We all have a voice. And if we raise that voice together for righteousness, then I think that that's going to make a big impact. You know, there's an old saying that, you know, the, the saddest thing in the world isn't a person that can't read. It's a person that can read and doesn't. And so I guess I will conclude by simply saying, you know, it's not so much that you have a voice and you recognize that voice, but it's that you don't raise your voice when it's time to do so. And I think now is the time to stand up and just basically say, 
what the church has always said is that the right to life is the preeminent value that we uphold in our society. So we speak for those who do not yet have a voice. We speak for the vulnerable. We speak for the defenseless. And we uh, speak for them. Okay? All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. And may God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.